The natural order is one of chaos. Flee and fail, you temporary beings. Tempers are running hot. Time to cool things down. Hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive. The street, this, mm, the strategically minded weekly sentinels of the multiverse stream hosted by yours truly, Lude Dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against that goal is not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and Handelabra Games right here on Twitch. Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for iOS, Android, and PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam, and always via good old analog cardboard and ink. You can get the game and more info at SentinelsDigital.com. And here we are. With our game tonight, it is Akash Buta in the Temple of Zhulong, facing a team of Absolute Zero, Freedom Five Bunker, Requital, Captain Cosmic, Best of Times Crown Arranger, and Prime Warden's Fanatic. Thank you, JZC. Uh, and I know Tuesday you said happy birthday, but it wasn't my birthday yet, and now it's Thursday, and it is no longer my birthday, but it worked out pretty well. I was happy with my birthday. It was very well. Uh, a lot of my students wished me happy birthday. Some of my students actually gave me presents and that was surprising. They're probably bribing me though, but some of my students gave me presents and that was awesome. Um, anyway, Absolute Zero here has a focused apertures, two modular realignments, and a null point calibration unit. Freedom 5 Bunker has an external combustion, flat cannon, heavy plating, and upgrade mode. Quite old Captain Cosmic has augmented ally, cap uh, cosmic weapon, not captain weapon, cosmic weapon, dynamic siphon, and vitality conduit. Best of times, Crown Ranger has by any means Ranger's Mark, sudden contract, and temporal grenade. And Prime Warden's Fanatic has divine sacrifice, emboldened, and two end of days. We can summon Fanatic when we need to. And this is just standard Akash Buta, it's my present to myself. <laughs> We're just playing standard here, because we can summon Fnatic when we need to and probably win the game or something. Grabbing your teach is a time-honored tradition, indeed. Disrupt the field. Brings out a living rock slide. And a master of the temple, which is gonna sit there for a while and do nothing. And three projectile damage from living rock slide. This guy scales terribly with the number of heroes. With three heroes, he's not too bad. With five heroes, he's really rough. Unfortunately, absolutely zero here can't be too offensive. He is forcibly having to null point calibration or draw two cards. Standard Akash is my I just want to have fun villain. Yeah, indeed. Because the nice thing about Akash Buta is that she has 200 HP. Uh, standard isn't really too difficult, depends on the environment, of course. Advanced and challenge really ramp things up. But I wanted to have a little bit of fun with my birthday and everything. Alright, Freedom 5 Bunker! Um, I probably want to save that external combustion for when there are more limbs out. I know that the living rock slide is kind of a priority, but... I can put out a heavy plating and defend defend myself a little bit, and then we can see what the other guys have in store. Absolute Zero has Impale, that's good. Captain Cosmic has a Wounding Buffer, Crown Ranger has a Displaced Armory, we can get the hat. Brutal Censure for Fnatic, Turret Mode for Bunker. Not really a good time for Turret Mode, but Turret Mode for Bunker. Alright, do I want Jim's hat? Do I want the hat? If I get the hat, then I could by any means an ultimate target on the same turn! And we can have both of those target the rock slide. Although ultimate target wouldn't help the rock slide, but... Um... Wounding buffer... I don't know, the, I mean, it can counter the living, living rock slide. Uh, getting the... Embolden, not embolden, and getting the... In getting, I don't even know what the word is, impale. Hey, Boulder Rep! Thank you for the birthday greetings! How are you doing tonight? Um... 
But we do know what the top of Fnatic stack is now, so Prime Warden's Fnatic could do something exciting. Not really. Um, let's get the hat. I want the hat. This is my present to myself, is the hat. Bulnaraps had a crazy week. Uh, do I want to... Yeah, we'll target the rock slide. What's been going on, Bulnarap? Alright. Augmented ally? Then I could have Bunker use his base power and a different power on his turn? Let's do that. Give Bunker some support. And then Requital. Alright, we can take the Energy Bracer onto Cosmic. You, you don't have a moment, you're out with the girls. But they feel well enough to get out. Oh, I see. Alright, do not want to put this on Fnatic. Do not want to put this on Cosmic. Don't want to put this on Bunker Absolute Zero. <laughs> I guess it's Chrono Ranger because the other heroes are going to hit themselves at some point in the game. And I construct Cataclysm that was not revealed. And now we can put by any means on Akash and Sudden Contract for the ultimate target on Akash. I don't think we we're going to get rid of the Rock Slide. I could have if I focused more on him, but that's okay. Actually, we might still be able to because Brutal Center will do three and then we can do something else. Um. Embolden is the only one... Well, I guess I could Divine Sacrifice, but I don't... <laughs> you don't want to Divine Sacrifice Akash Buta right before she deals herself 10 energy damage. That is not something you want to do. But I could Divine Sacrifice for two on the Rock Slide, and then the Brutal Censure, which we know is on top of Fanatic's deck, will do three... And we only have to do one more point of damage, and we have a power that can do that, don't we? Maybe? No? We don't? No. Oh. I guess Bunker might be able to reveal something. Let's go embolden. Um, Chrono. No. Well, no. Chrono's fine. We can get him a different power, and then he could... Do his base on someone else. Three damage, brutal censure. You have very stupidly divine sacrifice, Takash. And you're like, oh no! Not that! Anything but that! Um, yeah, let's do bunker. Because we might be able to get out of turret mode or something. We have impale still. We have cosmic weapon. Just doing my job. Chastise. And upgrade mode is out now. Uh, wasn't I thinking there was another point of damage going to Living Rock Slide? I feel like there was. I forgot about a point of damage somewhere. Oh well. Wounding buffer will hit the living rock slide. Cosmic weapon cannot be used unless the rock slide hits a person. Okay, so there we go. We have it. So Captain Cosmic plays the cosmic weapon. Chrono Ranger takes the cosmic weapon. And then when dynamic siphon is hit, Oh wait, where's the dynamic siphon actually? I don't even know where it is. It's somewhere, we're gonna figure it out. Shinobi Assassin. Put a primeval eruption into play. We have ensnaring brambles. Ensnaring brambles. Shinobi Assassin would have been discarded, so it enters play. Akash Buddha plays Arboreal Phalanges. Uh, cool. We don't have a dynamic siphon, I thought we did. Maybe it's Augmented L I was thinking of. 
challenge that crash is the most fun. You can actually use your villain damage erasing stuff. Yeah. Stop Akash from dealing damage or something. Alright, well. Whoever I target is gonna go away. Because the other Shinobi Assassin will also target it. So let's do this to Energy Bracer, even though I like it, because I want the other ones. Although I could destroy the sustained influence. There we go. That's something. Uh, keep that on Cosmic. True Form comes out. Akash plays a Primeval Eruption. Oh boy, environment. You're not doing a good job here. Mountainous Carapace. Arboreal Phalanges. Uh, living Rock Slide. And this discards Mysterious Ceremonies. Long shuffles, Akash flips. Oh boy! One and one to everyone. The good news is this is two and two to Rock Slide, so Rock Slide is gone for sure. That's the good news! <laughs> Alright, well, let's just fast forward through this because this is going to take a while. And then we can... Well, it doesn't really matter who this goes to. Let's throw this on Bunker. Alright, now we're on the second turn. Allies of the Earth. <laughs> okay. Um, if we hit Chrono, then the Wounding Buffer takes out the Rock Slide. Chrono can use a power. Uh, we can have this effect. The other rock slide. Lowest HP thing cannot deal damage. It should not be the wounding buffer. Let's put it on the energy bracer. Energy bracer still cannot deal damage. Phalanges. Phalanges. And then the other rock slide targets Chrono. Wounding Buffer goes off, Chrono goes off, and he takes out the Living Rock Slide! There we go! There's the next level strategy! So we've avoided <laughs> three Rock Slides, or two, no, two. Just two, yeah, okay, just kidding. Alright, two, we've got rid of two Rock Slides. Uh, and absolute zero. We have the impale on top that we would love to get out someday, but first we'll just continue tanking because that's the only valid option we have right now. And discard a card to use a power, except I am in upgrade mode right now, so I should not. Destroy upgrade mode. And is this the time to summon Fnatic? I mean, I don't really want to. In fact, I just set up everyone, so no, I don't want to summon Fnatic. We have two summon Fnatic buttons here, and I don't want to use them. The days will not end, although that ongoing card is pretty annoying, but we do have a temporal grenade at least. Which we're going to have to utilize. So, since I can't summon Fnatic, should I external combust? I mean, I guess I can't play Flat Cannon and use it, and there are a lot of targets, so let's go ahead and External Combust. Get rid of a lot of things. Now, I have to be careful with these, because... Actually, as soon as Bunker uses this power, it's going to... Oh, I guess I can't... It's not going to be a good idea to use this. Or to use this power then, because. Because they're going to take out constructs. Mm. 
Does anyone have a search their deck for something card? Chrono did, but it's gone now. Let's just put it on Chrono. Do I want to sacrifice a construct? They worked out so well for me, though. But it's also possible that co that cosmic gonna blow up a bunch of stuff anyway. So let's go ahead and just get it over with. Absolute Zero has onboard module. He would love that. Cosmic has dynamic siphon. Fnatic has brutal censure. Chrono reveals Shinobi Assassin, which enters play and targets a construct. Oh, right, and she regains HP. That is even more foolish than. Uh, let's get rid of the energy bracer for realsies this time. Oh, and we're gonna do this again. All right, I wasn't sure if that was gonna happen or not. I sort of did that because I was curious if that would happen or not. Uh, I guess Augmented Ally is now not going to do too much. Recharge mode, forcibly put into play. Oh, and I guess I don't even know what Chrono's top of deck is after all. After all of that, I don't know what it is. Alright, see you in a bit, Bulnerup. I want the onboard module because we kind of want to get Absolute Zero set up. He draws an, an onboard module. We can get the isothermic transducer. We can play the onboard module. And then we can draw a glacial structure. And we'll take the another isothermic. And isothermic would be tempting to play, but impale will damage Akash. Like, immediately, at least. And now Bunker can draw two cards. All right. Don't want to just resign myself to destroying constructs, because then I could do two dam or three damage to two targets. Although we don't. I mean, I guess we do want to get rid of the carapace. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Especially since we lost the Energy Bracer, we don't want to put too many Constructs into play. So let's hit the Carapace. And I guess Phalanges. And the top three cards, Siphon, Bracer, Ally. So I would have done quite a bit of damage, although we do have the Bracer again. Or Cosmic. And Augmented Ally, I guess we could just put that back on Bunker. And then we can dynamic siphon on Prano. Skip. No bounties in the trash. Temporal grenade. Do I want a hunter and hunted? Because then I could do three damage to multiple things on my turn. with Temporal Grenade. Wipe out the Carapace. Get a Phalanges down to one, and the other Phalanges down to four. True Form is currently targeting either Absolute Zero or Requital Captain Cosmic. What's the worst that can happen? All right, get rid of the carapace. Forum threads are reminding you that Jim Brooks, harmonica playing Virtuoso of the Void was funniest letters page joke ever. I have not listened to the letters page in a couple months. And wait, oh, Akash did damage. So I can use a power like destroy Hunter and Hunted. Okay, I can't do that right now because it will expire immediately. 
Although I could use it quickly to get rid of one of these things, I guess. That seems like a waste. Destroy the ally. Temporal grenade is destroyed. Oh, I thought I had him bolt. Hmm. Seriously? <laughs> I had two power uses. Yeah, use two powers. Temporal grenade. I guess because I didn't choose to use the power, it counted as skipping one of my powers. So when I hit skip here, still says two powers. And then if I target you, I destroy allies of the earth, destroy temporal grenade. Yeah, I didn't get to use my second power. Cool. I think that's a bug, but we'll just, we'll just take advantage of or not necessarily take advantage, because it's not really an advantage of taking thing, but I can at least utilize one of my powers to select the Arbor of the whole Phalanges. Blame John. Hashtag Blame John. Phalanges is now gone. And then I can hit the other Phalanges that destroys allies of the earth that destroys temporal grenade and then that should make my power immediately expire no it didn't or no I destroyed this heart anyway so it didn't matter and now I have another power to use like destroy hunter and hunted which actually because I have emboldened I don't want to keep hunter and hunted out so that was a nice one shot yes all right I'm gonna go in Divine Sacrifice. And I'm gonna target Fnatic with this. No, I'm kidding. Now let's hit Brambles. And Brambles. And Phalanges. And then base power. This plays Brutal Censure. Which is not a surprise. Uh, we do not have another power for Chrono. And Bunker cannot use powers. So there's not really much exciting power uses. I guess I could have Chrono use a power to target something. Redirect all damage done by Fnatic to Fnatic. Yes. Uh, boy. Can I get Chrono to use a power before I do this thing? Maybe the Poisoner will come out. And I'm just gonna have Cosmic go. Here's... here's randomness. Vitality Conduit and two Autonomous Blades. And Cosmic is going to be dealt damage. So I could get this to go off if I have... If I do this to someone, um... Put this on Dynamic Siphon. And then put this one on the Autonomous Blade. And then the Vitality Conduit. Which we should put on Cosmic because he'll have been dealt too much damage. Because now he's going to be dealt... Oh, I guess it's only six. But now the Autonomous Blade dealt damage, so... The second Autonomous Blade goes off. And then Chrono can use a power to select the ensnaring brambles. 
Dynamic Siphon did damage, so now the Autonomous Blade goes off and destroys the Ensnaring Brambles. Look at this controlled turn. We don't need End of Days. Nope, Shinobi Assassin comes out. Targets Ensnaring Brambles! Perfect! We don't need End of Days, we can destroy all the targets ourselves. With the help of the Assassins. Although a lot of that was luck, so. Resurrection Ritual. So, cards destroyed. Villain cards get destroyed. Now get put under Resurrection Ritual. Ensnaring Brambles comes out. Oh no, something can't deal damage! Not Dynamic Siphon, not. Two Assassin. or two Autonomous Blades. The assassins are more afraid of Zhu Long than the giant nature spirit, it seems. Seems legit. Vitality Conduit cannot deal damage. That's a lot of damage. Alright, so Resurrection rich Resurrection Ritual. Whenever a non-character card villain target is destroyed, put it under this card. The end of the environment turn, if the true form or Zhu Long is in play, put the bottom card under this card into play. Into play. When this card is destroyed, put all cards under this card in the villain trash. So, that is probably going to stay out because we do not have environment destruction besides end of days. So, if I destroy the ensnaring brambles... The snaring brambles will come out, but I guess we can game this by repeatedly putting limbs underneath resurrection r ritual and having Akash do herself way more damage each round. So now I can't hit myself for fire to do three cold or two. I want to do more damage. I'm going to Jeremy this. Thermal Shockwave! Destroy Recharge because I kind of need to be able to use powers. Discard a card to use a power. Alright, so I can discard my upgrade mode. And now I can use this power and some, un some other power on my turn. Frostbound Drain is good. Potent Disruption. Sudden Contract, Sacrosanct Martyr, Adhesive Foam Grenade. I want... I think Frostbound Drain will do quite a bit. I can use it to get the Ensnaring Brambles down to one. Is there any other way of doing one point of damage? Uh, top of Fanatic's deck is Sacrosanct Martyr. I can do quite a bit. We have... Uh, the Sudden Contract. We can use that to get another bounty. Getting Kill on Sight in play and then having base power on in the, uh, go off on the Brambles seems wise. And we still have emboldened, so Cosmic can put the Cosmic Weapon on the Bramble. So I guess we don't need the Frostbound Drain just yet. Uh, potent Disruption, destroy a Construct, and do damage based on it. We have a number of Constructs. We don't need all the Constructs. Uh, we have lots of good choices here, fun fact. Let's go with Chrono, because I like Chrono. And let's try to get him to get more cards. Do damage to Akash. And then Bunker could play a card and use its power. Oh my gosh. So we can do damage to Akash. We can do damage to Brambles. And we can damage True Form, who's kind of just been sitting around for a while, not doing much. 
or not been not, he has been doing quite a bit, but we haven't been able to deal with him because we've been so focused on other things. All right, so let's get that cosmic weapon on Chrono, and let's see what these three cards are. Destructive response and two potent disruptions. So potent the de destru destructive response first, then now let's destroy two constructs. Um. Keep the energy bracer because we're gonna still have, after all this is done, five constructs in play. Uh, we want the cosmic weapon on Chrono. I guess that vitality conduit's not gonna be getting much use. Yeah, I might as well do this. And then this is going to do five damage. So, if I can get cause Chrono Ranger to use his base power and then the cosmic weapon on ensnaring brambles to destroy it immediately. Uh, that would do five damage, so I need to do an extra point of damage to it, but I guess just doing my job would do that. So let's do this big hit on Akash. And then I have to destroy another one of these. Um, so, Autonomous Blade... This one has an Autonomous Blade attached to it. This one's attached to Autonomous Blade. This one is attached to Dynamic Siphon. So if I take out Dynamic Siphon, the Autonomous Blades are completely inert. I want that Cosmic Weapon, so I guess Bunker's not going to be able to use as many powers as I would like for him to. And then things do damage. And then effect. And then effect. When am I going to find my unflagging animations? Don't destroy those. Just do my job. Discard cards. Discard equipment, probably. Discard construct, because we could probably get those back eventually, someday. Uh, let's discard a Vitality Conduit, get rid of Ranger's Mark, because we haven't destroyed a Construct yet. You don't need two End of Days. Displaced Armory, good. Temporal Grenade, good. Ranger's Mark, alright. Terrible Tech Strike, that's decent. I am the prize! Welcome back, Bulnerap. Do this damage to the Brambles. So now, base power and uh, cosmic weapon takes out ensnaring brambles. So... What equipments could I get? Compounded bows, always great. Neurotoxin dart thrower, not too good when we want Akash to deal herself damage. Masada, mm, we don't need irreducible damage. Danny boy could do good spread damage though. Especially now. Um, let's get the bow. You can never really go wrong with the bow. Yes, Bolnerap and JZC, you two are the only active chatters tonight, which means you two are most likely going to be the viewer's choice specialists. Select the brambles. In fact, I don't even need the Cosmic Weapon, because the bow is going to do a good enough job. In fact, we'll do an even better job. So, Mysterious Ceremonies discard, moves under Resurrection Ritual. Chrono can use another power. Oh. Right. Let's actually do a better job of this, because uh, we can do more damage to Akash. Target brambles and then cosmic weapon the brambles 
Because then I can do one extra point of damage to Akash. Oh, geez, we have another gamer. And yes, this is still game one, because it's Akash. Akash is always the marathon game. Alright, so now the brambles are placed underneath the mysterious ceremonies, and brambles are going to come back into play. Unless we end of days. <laughs> In fact, with the destructive response, if we do have the dynamic siphon, if I put temporal grenade in play, I could end of days a bunch of things and then end of days to destroy a construct. That construct makes cosmic destructive response, hits the dynamic siphon on Chrono. Chrono, Chrono uses temporal grenade, destroys end of days. That is a combo that I could have considered. I don't want to employ that now. We have no need. We know that the top of my deck is, um, it is Sacrosanct Martyrs, so in preparation I should Ages of Resurrection. I could use Sacrosanct Martyr, deal myself 5 damage, output 8 Radiant to Akash, which turns into 9. Chrono would do 6, though. We could also have Bunker reveal a lot of cards. I want to do Sacrosanct Martyr though. I'll be boring. Because 9 Radiant Damage! We haven't gotten the, um... The... The Nuke yet. Mysterious Ceremonies. Ooh boy. Here we go. Brambles comes back into play. Um, and it would it would discard a card from the environment deck, actually, fun fact. Um, if it was the front side. One player may either draw three cards or play one card. So what shall we do? The most exciting option, maybe, would be Eye on the Prize. I like to combo Eye on the Prize with Hunter and Hunted, but we don't have that. We had one, we lost one. There is two more in the deck. There are two more in the deck. Do we know what she's going to play? She is either going to play a limb or entomb. And yeah. Like Absolute Zero only has like one card to play anyway, so... He's going to play Thermal Shockwave on his turn. He's probably going to use Thermal Shockwave on his turn. Bunker uh, could play Ammo Drop now or could play Ammo Drop later. It's not going to make a difference. Dynamic Siphon, I guess, could do exciting things if the, um, if the Living Rock Slide comes out. And the Entombs make me feel like I need to keep Temporal Grenade. I guess we could smite the transgressor, because then Fnatic does two damage, and she can use a power to play the top card of her deck and let someone else use a power, and that opens up a lot of possibilities. So let's do that. And let's focus on Akash. Do herself three radiance. Holy Nova! And then there's going to be a bunch of... This target is already at maximum HP effects.
And then I can do the same thing, where I deal myself 5 damage. This puts me at risk of KO if the rock slide comes out. But I could actually one-shot the brambles. Not that I need to, but I could one-shot the brambles. Because then, Akash deals herself damage. Let's have this go off first. She deals herself damage, so Chrono can use a power. You could compounded bow, Akash. And then it gets placed underneath Resurrection Ritual. And then Julong shuffles, Akash is flipped. In tomb. So. Can we do 38 damage to Akash this round? With Chrono Ranger in our term in our term. With Chrono Ranger in our team, you betcha. Get the thermal shock wave out. Hit the Akash. So currently he has done. 7 cold, and he's at 17, so he doesn't need to heal, and he can actually do more damage. I can... I can hit the dynamic siphon. Who is this next to? Oh, that doesn't tell me who is next to. It's next to Chrono, right? So Chrono can use a power. That seems wise. Compounded bow... And, and is there anything else? If I hit... Oh, we don't have Wounding Buffer. I was thinking there's... Those Autonomous Blades are next to Dynamic Siphon. I can't get Dynamic Siphon to deal damage. Um... If Chrono had Hunter and Hunted, we could do extra cold to him. We could set it up for Shinobi Assassin to take out Akash, but since we've hit the Dynamic Siphon, it needs to be when Akash is at two or fewer, which means two or one. And especially if I hit him, then I can't really use Bunker's base power, so let's not do that then. Let's just hit True Farm. 11 fire transmutes to 13 coal to Akash. So someone had a bad day. All right, um, ammo drop, I guess. And let's see what cards we have. Absolute Zero has Isothermic, not exciting. Cosmic's Energy Bracer, not that exciting. Chrono's Sudden Contract is exciting. And Addict's Holy Nova. Grenade launcher. Let's go with Chrono. More bounties. And let's put that on the whole gang. When a target leaves play, you may destroy a target with four or fewer. And hit Akash. Can we do 13 damage to Akash this round? I'm not sure. Might not be possible, he says. All right. Harsh Offense, I could do 5 damage straight up. Dynamic Siphon would work best if we can get it to ping or something, but let's Harsh Offense. We have lots of things we can destroy. Or no, right, that's top of deck thing. Alright, well, that's fine. Requital, 2 Harsh Offenses and a Sustained Influence, so I guess we're gonna keep revealing bunches of cards. We got a two now. Can we do five damage to Akash? Aw oh, man, I didn't do five, I did seven. Darn. Shucks. 
All right, we have defeated the almighty Akash in the Temple of Zhulong, which... I mean, she did kind of rampage on the first environment turn, but we managed to overcome all of the difficulties because Chrono is just too good. You know what time it is? It is actually 6.44 p.m. We defeated Arkash Buto in less than one hour. That's how good of a match that was. But it is time for the fabled viewer's choice match. Who wants to participate in viewer's choice? Oh, my chat hasn't actually been updating, apparently. Cool. Let's not do that on screen. <laughs> Let's actually get rid of that for a second. Um, fun fact, I guess you were sending messages that I never saw. Oh, no, no, I am seeing messages. I don't know why it's doing this. All right, let's... Let's do this then. Two eight one three one seven two. Remember my computer? I said that out loud. I shouldn't have said that out loud. Too bad. This token will expire by the time you hear it, so it doesn't actually help you. Test. There we go. All right. Let's replay this. All right. Who wants to participate in viewer's choice? Alright, sorry about that. M29G Gamer, JZC, Darren2500. Um, is Bolnarap still here? He is listed. Bolnarf is here. Aha! Hello! Anyone else want to participate? I will close it in 30 seconds. Do, 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 Alright, M29G Gamer, is this going to be classic or team? Aha, we're playing classic. Here we go. Here comes the onslaught of questions. JCC, choose the villain. Darren, 2500, 3, 4, or 5 heroes. Boulder app, choose hero number 1. M29G Gamer, choose hero number 2. JCC, choose hero number 3. Three heroes. So after this, you see Darren choose the environment, and then to wrap up a bull rep standard, and we're playing Citizen Dawn's of Standard, Advanced, Challenge, or Ultimate. Citizen Dawn, there you are. Citizen Dawn with three heroes. On the Tron, you. Whoops. And that was hero number two. Darren2500 says, Madam Metapires, fantastical festival of conundrums and curiosities. Bolnarap's hero number one is Dark Watch Expatriate, Nemesis. We're playing advanced, so 
increased damage dealt by citizens by one, and on the flip side, citizen does citizen down does not flip until there are H plus one or more citizens in play. With H equals three, this means four or more citizens in play, or three citizens other than Dawn. JZC votes for Termination Unity. So, Advanced, advanced Citizen Dawn versus Dark Watch Expatriate, Omnitron U, and Termination Unity in Madame Mittemeyer's Fantastical Festival of Conundrums and Curiosities. You still have. You yeah. have. I don't know why I can't read this. You have had your fun, but you still possess no true power. You and your allies shall fail. You're wrong, mother. Many with power use it for the good of all. Why can't you? So dark. All right, Dark Watch Expatriate is starting with an assault rifle, hollow points, incendiary rounds, and unload. So she has a gun and she has some ammo. Omnitron U has two ablative coatings, a reset, and self-sabotage. Termination Unity has Inspired Repair, Powered Shockwave, Raptor Bot, and Stealth Bot. And the starting citizens are Citizen Battery and Citizen Summer. And her first card play, Channel the Eclipse, which we can't destroy! The team of people with odd colored hair. Who is considered to have the most cards in play? I don't want Citizen Dawn to hit Expatriate anymore, so Expatriate will just take the hit. And let's keep Omnitron away from being highest. So Channel of the Eclipse hits her harder, fun fact. Alright, we don't have ongoing destruction right now, unless we can reset into into disruptive flechettes. I guess it just makes sense to assault rifle here. Hit Dawn. And I'm okay with these citizens for now. Battery hits hard. Summer does do quite a bit, actually. This is four fire damage. Okay, that's actually quite a lot. I'm gonna do that. I don't really want to hit battery. Battery's fine. Battery's okay. Until assault comes out. Alright, let's reset and hope to get disrupt the flechettes. We get self sabotage! Which is not what I wanted. Um, so instead, I'm gonna skip so that I could use my base power to play a blade of coating. I guess I could have played a blade of coating and used my power to also play a blade of coating, which seems silly. Alright, inspired repair. Gets me swift bot. That is not a bot, or I mean, it is a bot. It is not a card that lets me play bots. Powered Shockwave would do one light, one lightning to all non-hero targets. I will not do that just yet. This just lets me draw two cards. Supply crates and Raptor bots. Still no ongoing destruction. Unstable Midway. Not triggering right away. Channel of the Eclipse immediately plays Blinding Blast. So that's great. Unity's okay with this. We can get bots in the trash. Swift bot. Probably stealth bot. I usually want those to be in my hand so I can play them, but... Alright, let's get an equipment in the trash because I can get it back and self-sabotage. Expat, um, incendiary rounds isn't too exciting. I'm gonna hold on to the unload. Devastating Aurora! Well, there goes the gun. There goes the blade of coating. But on the trunk can react. Unstable midway is not going off after all. And everyone's tied at one card in play. So let's just keep Unity higher, I guess. So this is a really rough start, by the way. We're already at 11. Expat has no guns. So let's not play a card because I want to draw another gun and we got Submachine Gun. Not a really good card right now, but that's okay. 
reset gets me slip through time. Um, okay. I guess I probably should have... Actually, yeah, I don't want to self-sabotage. Reset gets me slip through time. And then skip, and then power... Oh, no, wait. Oh, I reset, so I don't have them in my trash anymore. Remember when I said I can put them in my trash so that I can get them back? I probably shouldn't reset if I'm going to do that. But that's okay, because I'm, I'm really trying to find... Something. I'm trying to find the disruptive flechettes. It's not working. Supply crate gets me cryobots. Now I can get a golem into play. Let's get stealth bot. Stealth bot will probably perish immediately, but we have stealth bot now, and we have B bot. If I can get B bot into play, all seeing Elzrabar. All right, so this is actually very helpful. Unity can discard B bot. Reveal on the Shrine X. That is not a one shot. Citizen Spring. Healing Light. Undid a lot of what we just did. Redirect everything to Stealth Bot, I would say. Stealth Bot will go away. But, we can always bring Stealth Bot back. Uh, on the Tron can take this safely. And we'll keep his equipment. Unity discards another golem. Reveals expatriates. That is not a one shot. Alright. We will use the submachine gun. I don't know that I will be able to use two unloads. Unity is a one-shot. Flash Forge. Interesting. Uh, we can get a construction pylon. Yeah, let's dish the powered shockwave. Let's keep the brainstorm so I can get more cards. Let's dish Cryobot. Let's skip that, and let's Construction Pylon and B-Bot. So now I have a means of getting B-Bot into play, as well as destroying Channel of the Eclipse, which is good. Um, so let's do this here. Draw a card. Rocket Punch. Right, we knew that. That is not an equipment in my trash, so I'll use my power to play the Rocket Punch. Alright. On the Tron is not a one shot. Destroy supply crate. Scrap metal. Hasty augment. Alright, hasty augment is good. But we can construction pylon. Get my B bot, get Raptor bot. And then Raptor bot eats the B bot. Oh no, first we do this. Unity can discard a scrap metal. Let's see what expat has. Not a one shot. Hit the B-Bot. Uh, deals one target, two projectile. We can get rid of Summer. And we can take out the Eclipse. Alright. Dawn is finally slowing down. Finally. You won't believe your eyes. Alright, we kind of aren't... We don't have enough cards, really, to keep doing this. Uh, so let's just not do it. I was really just, I was trying really hard to find an ongoing destruction. We finally found one. But now winter's here, which is sad. 
Oh, we can get rid of her in several ways. Do you have to get rid of winter? Winter hurts too much. Hello, Astralika. How are you doing? I'm gonna hit battery. With Citizen Spring, I can damage citizens a little more willingly. Let's go play that Gaussian Coil Blaster. Because it will trigger immediately. Dare I self-sabotage? I mean, if I destroy both of my components, I will do... If I use this on my turn, or use it on my power, I'll do two fire damage twice, twice. So eight damage. And then self-sabotage will do two times two, which is four, so 12 damage. But it seems a little too early for that. So I'm just gonna skip, skip and get more cards. Just Astra is fine. If you like uh, the Astra, then we can certainly do that. Oh, and I I can't draw two cards because I already played a card at the start of my turn. Um, no. Unity can get any golem out. So she can get Raptor Bot out. So let's brainstorm. Get Platform Bot. And Flash Forge. Hit Dawn. Hit Winter. Hit Assault. Or not Assault, Battery. And I said Raptor Bot, but I guess Stealth Bot is what we want, really. So things should hopefully start getting us into control. Maybe. Each target, each character card deals itself one psychic damage. Well, Dawn will hit herself harder because of advanced. And we can redirect all of this to stealth bot. So that's good. This only hit Dawn. You won't believe your eyes again. Return with the dawn. All right, we need to destroy that. Maybe we can get lucky. We can disrupt the flechettes it. Nope. Citizen Winter is back. Urgh. It's supposed to be pronounced Astralica. 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 All right, we're gonna assault rifle. Have to get rid of winter again. Have to get rid of return with the dawn. Does expat have RPG launcher? Nope. Let's draw defensive blast. We knew that. Currently not reducing anything. Citizen Winter keeps coming back, much like real life Winter. Indeed. One citizen in the trash. We'll get two more after this turn. Uh, a blade of coating. Maybe we'll be able to utilize it. Um, and in order to get rid of the citizens, I'm gonna rocket punch. 
Thank you, another lit down. And this viewer's choice match is pretty rough. Technological advancement. All right, we might be able to start getting HP recovery cards soon enough. Um, let's ditch a card. Amatron, one shot. Technological advancement. Okay. Let's get innervation ray. All right. I can't get B bot and a damage dealing thing out at the same time. <coughs> I could flash forge. I could haste the augment Omnitron. So we could play technological advancement. Let's do that. Sheppy! Welcome, and thanks for the raid. We're trying to stay afloat against Don. Let's give you butt. All right, now we have better means of getting golems into play. Um, let's have Omnitron ditch a defensive blast and hope to get that disruptive flechettes. Not a one shot. And now I don't have a stealth bot to help reduce this pain. And this is. Well, it's not the end of the world. Oh, I think we already knew that. Oh, well. A blade of coating reduces this to zero. That's the good news. Citizen hammer. Urgh. That one's rough. Well, Citizen Hammer is going to kill either Omnitron Yu or Unity. I think Omnitron Yu is the one who might have the most potential. And since Unity's going down, she's going to ditch cards. And we know Omnitron and Expat don't have one shots. Unity has a one shot. Robot Reclaim, which does not help. I don't think any of this, like, it's not going to help. She's, she's gone. She's dead, Jim. And Citizen Winter ends the game. The game's over, like, right now. There's no way I can target someone and have this actually do something. I guess, well, no. If I destroy... Nope, those are equipments. If if I'm the trying to have an ongoing, I could have Unity destroy it, but I can't. I'm just gonna hit hammer. Destroy return with the dawn for what good that does me. Three of us, or well, two of us are dead. Actually, it's even worse than that because this is increased by one. And then Winter takes its final victim. <sighs> I don't usually lose against Citizen Dawn. That kind of sucked. I don't like that. I don't like losing. Losing is bad. I don't want to lose anymore. Losing is the worst thing that can happen. So let's not lose anymore. I don't know that we had much of a chance, though, given the start, but, oh well. 
I challenge you, viewers, to play this match and comment on the YouTube video how you did. How about that, you know? If you're gonna do viewer's choice where you give me awful games, the least you can do is also play the awful game yourself. Honestly though, that wasn't supposed to be an awful game. Citizen Dawn isn't too bad, but we just never could get set up. And really, I guess Expatriate, Omnitron Yu, and Unity are all very setup heavy characters, and so it was always going to be a tough match. But if you want to have some fun of your own someday, and you're watching these view these videos, or you're watching this now, and you think to yourself, I can do better than Lude, I can win this match, certainly go ahead and give it a try. Upload your videos of your successes or defeats, and... I don't know. Let's start something new here. You know, start a new trend. Viewer's choice, and then viewer's play. Bolnrap will do that, and we'll put the result on Twitter. Oh, nice. And then I can also retweet those tweets. Oops, seems I missed some carnage while handling a thing. Yes, it kind of went too fast. This game ended very quickly. Well, the second slash third, actually third game of the night is the random game. And the first question is, is this classic or team? This is classic, so we're gonna stay on classic. I'm gonna hit random once. Random gives me Voss versus Freedom 5 Legacy, Freedom 5 Bunker, Scholar of the Infinite, and Rogue Agent Knife in the Enclave of the Endlings! Is this standard, advanced, challenge, or ultimate? This is advanced, Voss. So we're playing another core game villain. So advanced Voss, Freedom 5 Legacy, Freedom 5 Bunker, Scholar of the Infinite, and Rogue Agent Knife in Enclave of the Endlings. Boss and Enclave sounds dangerous. Well, there aren't minions there. Cower before the might of the Thorathian conquering fleet! We stand together against injustice in all its forms! So, Freedom 5 Legacy has a danger sense, two motivational charges, and a thock. Freedom 5 Bunker has auxiliary power source, external combustion, grenade launcher, and upgrade mode. Scholar of the Infinite has Expect the Worst, Grace Under Fire, Keep Moving, and Mortal Form to Energy. Rogue Agent Knife has Incidental Contact, Infiltrate and Obfuscate, Primed Punch, and Prototype Servo Gauntlets. First minions are the Fire Sworn, the Psy Weaver, the Shock Infantry, and the Ion Lancer. And. Cork Drive Translocator. Slomara putting out a forced deployment. Well, currently I don't even have much of a means of dealing with a forced deployment when it comes up anyway, so. A surprise forced deployment isn't really any worse than a planned forced deployment. And all of our damage is reduced by one, and when we flip Voss, he plays extra cards. And that Translocator is in play, which is effectively playing us against flipped Voss. I feel as though we need to get that out of the way, like, fast. External Combustion would ordinarily be a good way of getting rid of all the minions, except of the minus ones. And Grace Under Fire is actually going to do a lot of damage, so that's probably what we're going to utilize. So let's just focus fire on the Quark Drive. Get that out of there as fast as we can. And then another player can play a card. Or anyone can play a card. Not just me. Um... I think, though, if I get the prototype servo gauntlet out, then knife could... Well, I guess primed punch versus prototype servo gauntlet doesn't matter. Well, prototype will do more damage, is what that actually means. Infiltration of escape is certainly one, because we'll certainly almost always have second highest villain targets. So 
So let's go ahead and get knife set up then. And let's external combust. And then let's see what we have in store. Legacy has lead from the front. Scholar has get out of the way. Knife has flawless execution. Let's get flawless execution now. Whenever damage dealt by knife reduces a target to one or fewer, destroy it. That might help. Especially with Grace under fire. I guess I could have kept moving. Um... Nah, that's fine. I will do zero damage to myself and zero damage to another thing. And now we can take out the cork drive! Success! Let's not destroy a card. Alright, Erdid. Non environment target with the second highest. And now all these minions go off again. Another June Bound Fire Sworn. But he's not playing another card because we got rid of the translocator. Alright, round two. Erdid is always going to be targeting a hero. Currently could target Legacy. Danger Sense would prevent Erdid from doing anything. Um, we would like to take out the Psy Weaver. We could take him out with Motivational Charge and then we get hit points. We can take him out through several other means if we really wanted to. I don't really want to keep moving Scholar. I mean, I guess we can keep moving into, like, Mortal Form to Energy. Or not Mortal Form, but uh, Flesh to Iron. But he doesn't have cards right now to really utilize anything, so I'm just gonna hold on. Hold off on that. And Bunker only has Grenade Launchers, which aren't really that exciting. I guess if he gets Auxiliary Power Source in play and then destroys it and then plays Grenade Launcher, but the Grenade Launcher is not gonna do too much damage. We don't really have exciting cards right now. We have good heroes, but not really exciting cards, except for Knife, who's already decently set up. Honestly, I think I'm gonna Motivational Charge. Just to get rid of the Psy Weaver and give us hit points. Let's get Exari Power Source, and then I can decide to use it on some turn if I want an extra power. Legs, Heroic Interceptions, Scholars, No One Hold Fast, Knife for the Greater Good. I think Scholar wins. More cards, more options. Proverbs and Axioms, ooh, that's good. Get out of the way. Alchemical Redirection. Transmutive Recovery. Truth Seeker. kind of want to um, Proverbs and Axioms, especially because we'd only deal ourselves to Psychic Damage to use a power. So we have the Heroic Interception, Turret Mode, Transmutive Recovery, for the Greater Good. We need those cards. Um. So, if Legacy uses a power, one player may play a card. Um. What was I thinking of? 
I guess if he gets Scholar to play Truth Seeker, then Scholar has a power that he could use on his turn. He could also keep moving into Flesh to Iron, and then with Truth Seeker, he can maintain Flesh to Iron. So, legacy, legacy damage. I guess I could also motivational charge for hit points. No, we don't need that. Scholar plays keep moving into flesh to iron. Gets out a truth seeker. Um, let's have Bunker go. Let's see what we have in store. Legacies, inspiring presence. That's great. Scholars, no one to turn loose. Nice kinetic neutralizer. Definitely go with legacy. Probably should have started with bunker, but oh well. Although now we're all going to deal ourselves more damage. <laughs> deal damage. And let's go ahead and use this. I guess I could use Knife Space Power for a random effect, but oh well. We can get rid of things. Um, I'm going to get rid of a Fire Sworn because Knife can do extra damage because of the Prototype Servo Gauntlet. And let's keep these cards. Deal self damage. And then I can actually use channel to take out a thing. And then I can use Truth Seeker to take out another thing. All right, Voss can flip right now. Which is a big question, do we want to flip Voss or not? Generally, you don't want to flip Voss unless you're set up because he'll be playing two cards each round. But I think we're already decently set up. So I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Oh yeah, Flawless Execution went off. Alright. Boss is flipping. Unless Slamara comes out. Slamara plays Genebound Banshee. Lead from the front. Heavy plating. No when to turn loose. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's just throw this on Voss. <laughs> he flips if there are no minions in play, but regardless, I'm gonna throw this on Voss because it's big damage. So Voss isn't flipping. And a Genebound Guard comes out, so that's fine. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Slamara, for ruining our perfectly laid plans. And we have to get rid of things. Uh, surge of Strength and Motivational Charge is what I'm going to do. We have to get rid of Slamara. Oh, wait, you know what? No, I can't get Scholar to play a card. Or no, did I, ha I had Bolster Allies. Hold on. No, I did not have Bolster Allies. I just drew Bolster Allies, probably. Uh, no, let's stick with what I was doing. Oh, you know, I could easily destroy Slamar. You know, I'm going to do that instead. Because I have Legacy. I could always move environment cards out of the play. There's the bolster allies. Destroy auxiliary power source to use an additional power, which would be grenade launcher. No. Destroy recharge mode. Get get the omni cannon out, and then let's see. Can we get scholar draw cards? Fleshed iron is not a card that we can use. Legacies next evolution. Nope. Scholar is losing his flesh to iron. Um, what did 
knife even have? I kind of... I was more focused on... Alright, I don't even remember what I saw. I was just looking at Scholar, and then I totally zoned out. Knife has focusing conduit blade. I want that one. Legacy has next evolution. I want that one. But we can get that on Legacy's turn. Curse you! No one to turn loose! For one point of damage. Let's not destroy this card. Instant contact, that's gonna do a lot of damage. <laughs> I don't think I want to do that much damage. Um... That's for the greater good. Draw for greater the uh, for the greater good number two. For the greater good number two. Primed punch. So I can prime punch, and then I can prime punch. My kinetic neutralizer cannot enter play, so we can get rid of the gene bound guard easily. And get rid of the gene bound banshee easily. Keep these cards in play. And then primed punch the Voss. So what is going to happen now? Corruption! Which didn't hit Bunker. Foss flips. Gene bound soldier. Gene bound Psy Weaver. Bunker can take that. Knife's hurting. I think we should redirect knife. I know I, I said no to that previously, but I will say yes to this now. But I could heroic interception, but that will hurt me a lot. Let's bolster the allies, considering that Scholar lost too many cards in the tragic accident. And let's go ahead and motivational charge. Probably should get rid of the environment at some point. Maybe. Fortitude is good. Um, no. Yes. We're gonna build up my Omni Cannon. Now let's see what we have. Surge of Strength is already in play. Flesh to Iron. Overdo it. Turret mode. Flesh to Iron is a boring play, but I guess I could play it and then play something else on my turn, like get out of the way. Overdo it. I don't want to keep it in play, but I could play it to play extra cards. I'll do that. 
And I don't want to use my Omni Cannon just yet. So I'm going to maintenance unit. And keep Bunker alive. Flesh to iron. And then I can Truth Seeker the soldier. And we draw solid to liquid. Ooh, jeez. Let's not deal damage. Let's not deal damage. I guess I could use one of the primed punches, probably. But that's okay. Let's get the kinetic neutralizer out. And then energy burn can do a lot of damage. Because that target will have 10 or more HP. And then Primed Punch will also do a lot of damage. So Knife is the super OP hero right now. I do not want her to be dealt damage though. We don't need to keep playing extra cards. She's fine. The Endling Refuge. At the end of the environment turn, play the top card of the environment deck. Venix deals each non-environment target two toxic. So Knife is barely hanging in there. Just a casual 21 damage to the boss. It's the best kind of damage. Let's save Knife. TCF Conqueror. Ooh, jeez. No. Redirect this. And then this is gonna hurt, but every hero will stay alive. Oh, gee, mama. All right. <laughs> so it has come to this now. Voss is at 54. It's probably a little too early to play the game of can I do enough damage to Voss? <laughs> At the start of the villain turn, destroy a hero ongoing card, by the way. Well, I can get rid of the Frost Hound easily. But. I could also external combust to get rid of the frost town and get rid of a lot of these environment targets that are kind of doing us in right now. The best kind of damage is all the damage. Like when I get in this kind of situation, I kind of start thinking, can I out damage him before he out damages me? But because right now. I mean, the environment is a massive issue right now, but I don't think there's a good way of... Fortitude and next evolution fire might save legacy. I could next evolution melee, and then bunker... No, wait, well, I keep thinking I could do something else. I can't play heroic interception on bunker's turn. Bunker is not the hero to let other heroes play cards. Legacy is. If Scholar still had alchemical redirection, that would be nice.
Yeah, next evolution fire, I don't have to worry about TCF Conqueror, and I don't need to worry about Voss's lowest HP hero effect, but I do have to worry about the environment. Erdid is currently targeting TCF Conqueror or Scholar. Corruption hits everyone. Venix hits everyone. Well, let's just go ahead and play this <coughs> what if scenario if I go for maximum damage. Thok is the only damaging one shot Legacy has, and it will do three plus one plus one. So that's five. I could take out the Frost Hound with that, and that will let the other heroes do more damage to Voss. So that takes care of Legacy's play phase. Bunker cannot play cards because turret mode is in play. Scholar could get out of the way, which will let him regain quite a bit of HP, but this will only do two damage to Voss. Knife could instant out contact and take herself out. <laughs> or she could wrecking uppercut. Uh, which will do quite a bit of damage, and then play Incidental Contact on her turn. Incidental Contact will do six damage to everything that's environment and villain, and then she takes herself out. Yeah, we don't have that much damage, so it's not going to work out at all in that regard. Um... We could probably easily get rid of the Conqueror, though, if I sacrifice Knife. Like, Omni Cannon will do 7 damage, and Incidental Contact does 6 damage. And then Scholar can't hit him. Or no, he could with Get Out of the Way, so TCF Conqueror could be taken out easily. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Fortitude out, and then I'm going to Motivational Charge, and we're going to pray that Legacy survives. Um, Frost Town is definitely going down, though, so let's target Venix. At the very least, Bunker sh er, not Bunker, Scholar should survive. Bunker should also survive, so it's probably Legacy and Knife are going to go away, which is fine. I want external combust. Hit the Frost Town first. And then let's see what we have in store. Legacy has heroic interception. If only I'd made myself immune to melee. Keep moving. Wrecking uppercuts. Scholar's gonna keep moving. And here's where we here's where we do, do mortal form. And then Dare I saw it to liquid. Then I would have to discard three cards, and then I can't keep everything. So no, I'm going to get out of the way. Because now I can do five damage! Right, so now... <laughs> 
I can still take out everything except Erded right now. If I sacrifice Knife, I can get rid of everything, and yeah. This is the Knife Sacrifice. The Sacra Knife. Because Knife can get rid of everything else, which would otherwise kill us. Endling Refuge is going to stay in play, though. Well, she's going away, so we're going to destroy these cards. Remember when I said I wasn't sure if we had enough damage? We probably did, actually. Am I back? Woohoo! 
Welcome back to Dolphin's Dive with Blue Dolphin. Sorry about the technical difficulties. My internet died briefly. Um, so... JZC says the last thing they saw was I was about to kill all the things with the knife and... There's the incident on contact. So we'll just resume where I left off. I think I'll just send Krista the local recording for YouTube. Let's go ahead and follow the execute herded. And Knife sacrifices herself. Otherwise, the environment was going to kill her anyway, so... Bye, Knife! What you did was for the greater good. Hall of the Terminarch! And Yansa Videro. So Yansa Videro deals each non-environment target two sonic damage, which would almost kill Legacy, except Voss is going to kill Legacy anyway. But oh well. Field Lieutenant Samar is not a minion. No. Scholar takes that. And Legacy goes down! And Force Deployment comes out. So now this is the Bunker and Scholar Show. Legacy's in caps. One player may play a card even if they would otherwise be prevented. One player may use a power even if they would otherwise be prevented. One player may draw a card even if they would otherwise be prevented. I love those. Knife has. One hero may use a power. Each target regains one HP. Reveal the top card of a deck. Put it into play or discard it. So... Seeing as we kind of need to not die, I guess we could just have force deployment go off or something, but... Um... So... Bunker's power is now basically, do you want Scholar to play the top card of his deck? Here's what it is if you do. So... We're not sure if we want to use Bunker's power. We can Auxiliary Power Source to use an extra power. Uh, we can play Turret Mode so that Omni Cannon can do an extra point of damage. But with Field Lieutenant Tamar, there's a minus one on Voss. Um, which is annoying. I mean, I guess that Scholar can eventually just win the game. Maybe. Well, I can put maintenance unit under Omni Cannon. I can play turret mode with Bunker. I can use turret mode to pl to or use Omni Cannon to destroy Voss and play the top card of Scholar's deck, and then we can see what happens there. Uh, do we want him to draw a card so he can do extra damage with Omni Cannon? Do we want Scholar to draw a card? No, let's... <coughs> let's have Bunker draw. Decommissioned hardware. In my trash is not an equipment. Hmm. Let's not destroy auxiliary power source, because turret mode will let me use an extra power anyway. And let's move two of these cards. Skip that. Play turret mode. Use the Omni Cannon. And then let's see what Bunker has, or Scholar has. Scholar has no one hold fast. So Scholar might as well play that and draw five cards. Expect the worst. Solid to liquid. Keep moving. Keep moving. Transmute of recovery. Uh, which he has no elementals in his deck anyway, so that's not really exciting. But I can ditch solid to liquid. I don't think I need to expect the worst though, because he already has flushed iron. Uh, might as well transmute of recovery. Beyond 
Uh, that minus one is annoying. Does he have another get out of the way? No, he doesn't. Grr. Um... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to destroy Voss before the minions come back, so we might as well just work on getting rid of the minions again. Two don't dismiss anything, though. Power, HP, reveal the top card of a deck. And the cards in Scholar's deck. Mm -hmm. Not really too good. Let's just have Scholar draw the cards and eventually get him to be Super Scholar. Grace Under Fire. Basto. Immutus. Hey guys, I'm here for the party. Here for the party, guys. Well, that means all the minions are going to target the Mutus. <laughs> Alright, there are nine minions in play. And another force deployment. Hmm. Not only is Amutus out, but Yatsubidero is protecting Amutus. And we have no means of getting rid of Amutus other than him just eventually dying. So Voss is, like, flipping. Um, does this say how many minions there are? No. Just to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are ten minions. I didn't count right. I'm dumb. There are ten minions. At the start of the villain turn, if there are two or more minions in play, Voss flips. At the start of the villain turn, if there are ten or more minions in play, the planet has been overrun by the Therathian army. And, um, <laughs> Mutus is kind of... Letting them run over <laughs> the, the freaking thing. Oh my god. I think Amutus is actually losing the game for us. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 minions and Amutus. I think we need to grace under fire Amutus. I think we have no chance otherwise. And even then, I don't know that this is going to take out Immutus. Fifteen. Oh, jeez. Proverbs and Axioms. And then what do I even do? <laughs> Bunker cannot do damage to Amutus, so there's no real point. Scholar could do one point of damage to Amutus. Nope. Oh, we could do extra. Ooh, duh. I could do this so we can damage Amutus more. I missed that clause. All right. We're going to do this again, and we're going to actually do this right. So... Then Bunker goes off, 
hits himself. And then heals HP anyway. And then Scholar hits himself, and Immutus is gone. Now there's a massive problem here in that I can't actually damage a villain anyway. This will do one damage, this will do two damage, except it gets reduced to zero! <laughs> so I think we're still screwed anyway. So let's think. Excuse me, jeez. Pray to this universe's line of gods, which is what again? Egyptian? It's what you want it to be. Oh boy. Top card of my deck is Grace Under Fire. <laughs> this is like the worst way to play Grace Under Fire is just so that the game can keep going. If I don't dismiss anything, Bunker can get an external combustion back. Which we're kind of gonna need <laughs> to rewipe these villains. There's one more force deployment though, which is annoying. Uh, reveal the top card of a deck, put it into play, or discard it. So Knife can't get anyone to play a card. Force deployment's gonna go off and put the minions or minions that I destroy back into play. But currently there's 10 minions. Does it say in lightning bolt? No, it doesn't. Yeah, we need to not dismiss anything. <laughs> Get my external combustion back. Play my grace under fire just so that this game doesn't end. And then my deck shuffles, so I'm not going to be able to, unless I don't draw a card. If I don't draw a card, and then I don't dismiss anything on Scholar's turn to put a Grace Under Fire on top that Knife then puts into play, which is like the worst way to do this. I can at least take out Tamar. This will help tremendously. Don't draw a card. Hmm. Scholar does have mortal form. Target these guys first. <laughs> of course, all of these guys are now going to go off without the luxury of a mutus. <laughs> but there's not much I can really do about that. <laughs> And, okay, I can at least stop a Psyweaver from going off. 
because Basto will take care of it. Groom! And Frazit. Gene Bounce Eyeweaver cannot deal damage. Grand Warlord Voss was apparently the second highest HP. Cool. And one of these are going to go off. Or, well, they'll come back, whatever. <laughs> Alright, game continues. TCF uh, Stalwart, beautiful. Still alive. Bunker needs to draw that card. Bunker needs to use that card. This has a whopping one damage. No. <clears throat> well, all right. Environment can take out one of these guys, maybe. I don't know. I don't even know. Room is currently targeting the ship. Oh no, he's targeting Voss still. He's still targeting Voss. Um, I don't want to use my base power actually. I will use Omni Cannon so I can destroy the Gene Bound, <laughs> the freaking Gene Bound Guard. Yay! All right. Well, actually, I might be able to destroy the ship with Sculler. Maybe. So we don't dismiss anything. We... Nope, not that, not that, not that, not that. Let's get external combustion back, and let's get grace under fire back. Don't draw a card. How many? There are 15. The, C the TCF Conqueror will be, uh, or Stalwart will be down to one. Oh, I did not want to draw a card. No! This is something you can't do in multiplayer. Do not automatically draw cards when it's safe to do so. And then, no. Alright, and then we can actually draw cards. Yay! Reveal the top card of Scholar's deck. Oh my gosh, it was Grace Under Fire! I 
I don't know. Well, can the environment do this? I don't know. Blue go! Do not save the stalwart, you fool. I will end you if you save the stalwart. You're gonna save the stalwarts. Thank you, Blue Go! At this point, I just want to go home. It's clear that the Enclave doesn't want to be saved. They want to be overrun. They think that this is a good idea. And there goes Bunker. And there goes Scholar. At least the music ended at an appropriate place. <laughs> Jeez Louise. This is not how you beat advanced villains. <laughs> and it all started when I sacrificed Knife. Yeah, this was not the Enclave of the Edlings. This was the ending of the Enclave. I'm just glad that Voss is smiling. Now look at that smile. I'd die any day for that loving smile. Alright. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Oh man. It's after games like these that I just feel dirty. It started when Slamara played No Wind to Turn Loose. It kind of did, because Scholar was pretty well set up and then he lost his entire hand. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else really to say. Sentinels Live on Tuesday, Dolphins Dive on Thursday, Tales from the Archive on Sunday. If you like this game, pick it up. If you don't like this game, then why are you watching right now? If you like this game and you haven't followed this channel, be sure to give this channel a follow. Uh, I just kind of... I need to go take a shower. This just felt so wrong. I tried to save you guys and you didn't want to be saved. Oh well. Good night, guys.